Welcome to Goldfish on Games, we're in our third and final part at looking at this machine, the Acorn Risk PC 600. And after looking at its hardware and its software, it's time to look at upgrades. So let's start by opening the machine up, shall we? And the first thing we're going to upgrade is going to be the OS. And we're going to take that up to RiskOS 3.7, as 3.5 was known to be a little, well, under bait, shall we say. To do this, we need to replace the ROM chips on the motherboard. And with a bit of effort, they pop off. We now need to make sure that we put the right chip into the right connector. They're actually labelled ROM1 and ROM2, so you just need to check the numbers that are written on them and you shouldn't go wrong. With that complete, we can now start the machine and we should get that lovely 3.7 boot logo. The error message basically reminds us that we are running old modules on the disk while having a newer OS in ROM. And I figured, seeing that I've been having a few issues with this old drive, it would be a good time to replace it. So I'll use this convoluted chain of an SD card in a compact flash card converter in an adapter to IDE. This is due to how picky the RISC PC can be with its drives, as it didn't have a 100% standard IDE implementation. To install the rest of the OS, we're going to need to jump through a few hoops. First off, we're going to need to copy the formatter HForm to a floppy disk, and due to the metadata issues, we're going to have to keep it as a zip, which means we'll also need an unzipper, and I'll use Sparkplug in the form of a basic program. Which when we change the type to basic and then run it, we will eventually get a working program that we can then use to unzip HForm and then finally format the hard drive. HForm itself is a console application and for the most part is pretty straightforward to use. It'll ask you a few questions based on the state of the drive in question but before long it'll have it all done and you'll be able to rename the drive, in this case I'll call it Sally because for some reason all my computers start with the letter S. With that done we can get a copy of boot from the Acorn FTP and copy it to another floppy disk, and then copy that to the machine. Due to the size of the drive, about 4GB, you should also run an additional command, which is configure ADFS buffers 0, or the machine will randomly hang. With boot in place, and the computer rebooted, it's all looking pretty damn nice. But now we're going to need to get the rest of the software onto the machine. Now unfortunately, parts of it are actually too big to fit on a floppy disk, so we're going to need an alternative solution. And my choice is to install a network card, which plugs into the communications port and sticks out the back. And with that installed, we can then set up the software side. RiskOS natively supports TCP IP, so getting it on the network is very easy. All we've got to do is give it a network IP and then reboot. My choice of software to get the data onto the machine is the classic FTP. I'm going to be using FTPC, which requires a few extra modules, which you can find if you look online. And while using Samba or something else that's more modern might be better, it's still massively faster than using the serial cable I was using in the past. And it's quick and easy to get going. And after testing that the network card is working by doing a quick ping, I can connect to my NAS and then quickly copy the rest of the files that I need. And via the power of a jump cut, everything's all set up and ready to go. And now that we've got one operating system up and running, let's keep this ball rolling and install another one, shall we? One that requires an Intel CPU. And we'll get that 
from this secondary CPU card. This is a 40 MHz 486 clone that was made by Textus Instruments. That's been turned into a secondary CPU card by Alpha One. It provides a basic BIOS and just enough hardware to get everything going. This also includes hardware based PC speaker audio. And to get that we actually have to hook up another cable. I modded this one as you need to put a resistor on the live wire, as described in the docs. With it plugged in and the machine turned on, I've gotten a copy of Bang PC to install. And with that done, let's take a look at how you set it up. The software will allow us to either set or create new drives. Set the amount of video RAM and overall RAM, as well as a number of other settings. But with only having 16 megabytes to work with in the RISC PC, we're not going to be able to give it all that much RAM. So let's get that sorted out, shall we? And I have here two 32 megabyte RAM sticks that will give us a much needed RAM boost. The old ones pop out quite easily and the new ones slot in quite nicely. And we can see from the boot sequence, we now have 65 megabytes of RAM. There's 64 that we just installed and the one megabyte of VRAM. So let's try running DOS, shall we? And I just so happen to have this pre-made DOS image all ready to go. Which boots very quickly into PC DOS 7. And there really isn't much here bar the defaults. But I do have an application here that will test the PC speaker by playing some audio. And it seems to work great. So let's get some games onto this, shall we? Thankfully, Bang PC comes with this really fancy file system module, which allows it to open and read these fat formatted disk images that the PC uses. And it just makes it look like any other regular folder. Though if you look closely, you can tell it's not an ADFS folder, as it allows for more chars in the file name. So let's copy two games over. The Amazing Planet X3 and Commander Keen. And with that copied over and the machine restarted, as you shouldn't copy these files while it's running, we can check out PX3. And with PC Audio selected, we can see that, hey, it actually looks quite good and it sounds pretty much identical. Though in game we can actually see it struggling a little bit. Keen 4 on the other hand worked really badly. Uh, it's completely and utterly messed up. Video looks bad, it's slow to play, and it's just pretty much unplayable. It seems that this solution isn't going to get you very far with all DOS games. Next up, I want to show this card running Windows 95. Which again, in massive coincidence, I just so happen to have a disk image already prepared. Which with a few tweaks to the graphics driver isn't actually all that bad. Yes, it's still slow, but we are dealing with a 486 processor here. But what we don't have is any audio from the operating system. And that's because it expects a 16-bit audio device. And as we can remember, this machine only has 8-bit audio. So let's try installing that 16-bit audio upgrade. The first job is to remove the headers from these pins over here. With those removed, we can then plug in the audio board, making sure the cable is on the left. The connector of which will then go onto those pins that we just freed up, making sure that the ground is the one pointed away from the back of the case. And after booting the machine up, we can enable 16-bit audio 
with this flag under configure and then reboot the machine again. But with that done we can now test out some of the audio demos. which, as we can hear, sound great. So let's boot up Windows 95 again. And there we have it, the boot chime. Ah, oh, that sounds great. Now I have to admit, it was at this point that I started to ask myself the question, what am I actually going to do with Windows 95 on the RISC PC? And I figured, why not try a little Doom 95? Which, being honest, played pretty badly. We still don't get any music, as it doesn't emulate a MIDI device, and the sound effects sounded absolutely terrible and horribly delayed. And on top of that, it was just slow. So this really isn't going to replace any of my gaming PCs, that's for sure. So instead, let's just play some classic Minesweeper. And there we have it, a nicely upgraded Risk PC. Now this doesn't cover all the upgrades you can get, these were just the ones that I was interested in checking out, and I might pick up more in the future and give them a whirl. And until then, I've been the Goldfish, that is a machine you'll see again, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching my series on the RISC PC600, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, all that fun stuff that give you that little tingle inside, and until next time, thank you and goodbye.